Lee Smith will get us underway. He will uh, put the ball down. He's just speaking to the ref today, Nick Bennett, who uh, apparently is a local lad. I don't think Nick's come from too far. I think Wakefield is, uh, is where he's from. So Lee Smith then strikes the ball, and we're underway here at the uh, Tetley's uh, bit of stadium, and that goes to Paul Sykes. Paul Sykes then feeds it on to a... Uh, a Dewsbury recipient and he's wrapped up in the tackle just shy of the 20 metre line Dewsbury then will look to come away and they'll bring that through the uh, the big imposing figure of Jordan Crowther and uh, Bradford will have to muscle up in defence as Dewsbury bring it towards this uh, this main stand side as the uh, heavens open a little bit and the rain starts to blow Dewsbury in possession then will make their way up to the halfway line and just slightly into the Bradford half as the referee's telling Bradford to get back on side and uh, another quick uh, little play there but Dewsbury slowly but surely inching further lose the ball in the uh, in the uh, well the referee's blown and given a first penalty of the noon to Dewsbury and said that Nikolai Lalesky had an hand in there and has knocked that one reef that one out so uh, first penalty afternoon to Dewsbury we'll see them uh, pile the pressure on here Bradford they decide to tap it the referee blows the whistle and says come back let's have that again so Dewsbury then through Toby Abinson will go forward and manage to get to the Bradford 30 metre line on the first drive of this set of six the ball moves to the left hand side of the sticks and Dewsbury target in this uh, this main stand side where we have Vila Halafihi and Elias McCarney defending but again, Bradford stand up in defence through Corey Aston as Dewsbury do a little run around there in the middle of the park and the ball moves slowly but surely. Now sit round about five metres shy of the try line and a little dummy, but the ball still remains on this left-hand side. The ball comes loose. That sees Corey Aston fall on the ball and Corey Aston is wrapped up then by some Dewsbury, uh, by the Dewsbury defence. So, first run of the afternoon then for Liam Kirk. Manages to get Bradford over this horn 10 metre line is wrapped up in the centre of the park and then the ball moves forward now and Mikel Aleski takes that one and manages to get Bradford just shy of his own 20 metre line on the second third tackle of this set Bradford then will go towards the far stand side through James Bentley and James Bentley is wrapped up managing to make a few metres but not really getting any uh, yardage there and now the ball finds Damien Surinan Damien Surinan straightened up offloads in the tackle the ball bounces, then goes to Sam Allis. Sam Allis to feed James Bentley. James Bentley then feeds Amari Caro, and Amari Caro is brought down just shy of the halfway line. We see, oh, fantastic little run from Joe Keys. Splits the gap. He's looking for runners. He's still going. Oh, fantastic run there from Joe Keys. Manages to get Bradford to 12 metres shy of the uh, Dewsbury Rams try line. The ball moves back inside on the fifth and last tackle. Vila Halafihi will cut back inside. It is the fifth and last. Does a little bit of a kick through there, but that's collected by James Glover. The ball's loose, and Bradford score. The opening try of the afternoon and Nick Bennett looks, checks his touch judge and gives that as a try and that's uh, inventive play there Danica. Yeah that was great support in there from Bradford and a great bake made at the start. You know uh, lost the ball a little bit then and uh, quick reaction time managed to gain it back and dive over the line so it was great, great from Bradford that. Well we saw some very very good inventive play there now I'm not too sure who put the ball down because uh, there was a bit of a melee and a bit of a free for all I'm going to go up with Sam Allis um, because uh, it certainly looked like Sam was in there. We will confirm that with our listeners, but uh, we wait for Corey Aston then to uh, take this one. But Bradford leave here after uh, just just nearly four minutes on the uh, on the Provident clock, and it's Dewsbury Rams nil, Bradford four, with a kick to come from Corey Aston as the wind builds up again blowing a gale here, blowing a proper hoolie. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're losing everything. We're losing the papers and everything's blowing about. Anyway, not to worry. It's only wind, in it? So, Corey Aston then composes himself and uh, waits for the Jews players to stand still. Looks at the sticks, takes his in-breath, one, two steps, strikes that one cleanly, straight through the sticks. So that's his first kick of the day. So now, Jewsbury Rams nil. Bradford Bulls six after four and a half minutes here 
at, uh, at this one and then you're listening to the big match live on BCB 106.6 FM brought to you in association with Providence. So we're now waiting for Paul Sykes to get the game back underway. Places the ball on the centre spot. He will uh, await the instruction of the referee. It's a bit slow to restart. The referee says get on with it. And Paul Sykes then strikes it. And that will find Ilias McCarney. Ilias McCarney then goes one way. Sells a dummy. Steps off to his left and manages to continue left in field. He's wrapped up by three Jewsbury defenders who push him back over his own 10 metre line. So no real advantage there as Sam Alex scoots away from the rook area and manages to get Bradford 15 metres away from their try line on the second tackle Corey Aston then Corey Aston then feeds Mikhail Aleski Mikhail Aleski gets Bradford over their own 20 metre line on the third tackle as we wait for Bradford to uh, put the ball through hands it does through Sirenen and then Ryan and then Ethan Ryan finds Liam Kirk and Liam Kirk is wrapped up there in the tackle so the ball will come. Bradford managed to get over the four metre, own 40 metre line on the fifth and last. And now the ball goes to Corey Aston. Corey Aston will kick that one. Splits the uh, fullback and the winger, although the fullback there has to turn round James Glover and brings the ball back. Nearly falls, nearly slips, but does manage to uh, break the line and manages to make a good 15 metres from his own uh, try line. And then is the awarded and a penalty for lying on from Sam Alice and Damien Surinan. So Paul Sykes will kick this one and he'll kick this deep and that will find touch and put Dewsbury on the Bradford Bulls 30 metre line for the restart of this set. Bradford then in defence will have to muscle up against this uh, lively Dewsbury outfit who are going hunting in packs here from a Corley Hallett. Takes the first drive as Dewsbury moves the ball across the park on the second tackle and are brought down on the Bradford Bulls 10 metre line. What can Dewsbury do? Dewsbury will look to spread the play. Paul Sykes will then spread the play. He will hit James Glover. James Glover will run to his left, then darts back right, then decides that no, he's going to go left before being wrapped up in the tackle. And Dewsbury now looking to pile the pressure on here. And uh, I think he's held up, he's just held up a metre shy of the line. There is a post obstruction, have you? But uh, you can hear the wind again blowing. And Dewsbury will still attack this main stand side but not really being able to penetrate anything on the fifth and last tackle. So Bradford now, back on their own try line, will uh, block the little chip kick. That bounces off the leg of Ethan Ryan and Liam Kirk. He bounces off the leg of Liam Kirk, and that sees Dewsbury being the livelier and pouncing on that and scoring to give the score. Now, Dewsbury Rams four, Bradford Bull six. Danica, inventive play or sloppiness from Bradford? Uh, well, you know, that was it was a good little kick through the gap. Uh, unfortunate not to get the hands on and bounce off his leg and Juju uh, just made the most of the rebound really there. You know, the contact is, is pretty good. It's quite aggressive now. But there's, they're getting a lot of bodies in front of the men. It's just a case of uh, winning the floor now and uh, getting back quick enough, enough to make a, a bit of difference in defence now. Well, Dom Speakman then with the try for Dewsbury. And we'll await for... Paul Sykes to uh, to line this one up and see if he can uh, open his account today with this conversion. He's usually pretty accurate with the boot. He was uh, an old season professional. I won't put my mortgage on it though because you never know these days. And uh, I think many times I'd have been homeless if I <laughs> if I'd have backed some of the kicking we've seen this uh, this season. You never know with this wind today. It's pretty breezy <laughs> out there for him. It is. It is. There is a breeze blowing. So. Good afternoon as well to uh, Hobbo, who's normally here. Hobbo's uh, away on his holidays. He's uh, treating Mrs. Hobson to a cruise to celebrate their 60th happy anniversary, or 60th wedding anniversary. So happy anniversary from me and the team and the fans here, Hobbo, as Paul Sykes picks that one to bring it all square after eight and a half minutes then at the Tetley's Bitter Stadium, Dewsbury. It now reads, Dewsbury Ram 6, Bradford Bull 6, and we'll await for Lee Smith to uh, to get play back underway and back, Dewsbury will uh, will get themselves set to feel the uh, the kick return as the referee says right let's uh, let's get on with this Lee Smith composes himself strikes that kicks that deep that then bounces off the chest of the Dewsbury player but he manages to gather it back in before being brought down just shy of his own 20 meter line and that was a good run from uh, from Dewsbury and now Dewsbury will look to bring in the pack men and certainly look to pick up the ante as we see Michael Knowles take a run 
He's then shortly followed by Dale Morton, who takes the third drive for Dewsbury on this set of six. I managed to get over the 40 metre line. It's a little bit of uh, sloppiness at, around the ruck area, not clearing the ruck properly. And uh, I think the referee's allowing that to continue at this stage, but whether he'll pull Bradford for it. Um, if it continues, remains to be seen. But Dewsbury, on the fifth and last tackle, have managed to get over the Bradford 40 metre line. Sit now, and they'll bring the ball, well, a little chip kick over the top. But that's not really going anywhere. Neilius McCartney is able to field that one quite easily and take that down just over his own 20 metre line. So Ethan Ryan then takes a run, his first run of the afternoon, and manages to get Bradford slowly but surely moving forward. As we now see Omari Caros come off the wing to uh, try and add his big bulk and frame to get Bradford on the front foot. The ball now goes to Willis McCanny on the third drive. Willis McCanny managed to get Bradford to the 40 metre line. Still inside their own half, Bradford, so really, really do need to find something here as we see a fantastic run from Mikhail Aleski. He managed to get Bradford 55, well, he gets 45 metres away from the uh, Dewsbury try line. The ball goes to Corey Aston. Corey Aston puts a little kick over the uh, back. That's collected by the fullback, James Glover. And Dewsbury now have the ball, will come back to the centre of the park and sit around about 18 metres shy of their own try line. And Bradford now are going to have to defend and make sure that they stand resolute to, uh, to the Dewsbury, who are looking a little bit more livelier in these opening stages here and certainly a little bit more hungry for the ball. What would you say, Danica? Would you say that uh, of the two teams so far from the 10 minutes we've seen, Dewsbury certainly seem more hungry to uh, get stuck in and... Uh, and take the ball forward. Yeah, definitely. They've definitely picked up the uh, the battle here down the down the middle. You know, the contact, they're running in, they're running with force and uh, you know with commitment. To be honest with you, it's uh, they're putting on a hard hard challenge for the Bradford defence. So Bradford then on the fifth and last tackle as Dewsbury uh, sit round about 30 metres shy of the Bradford try line. Will go with another little kick over the top, trying to find a space between Ellis McCarney and Ethan Ryan. But Ethan Ryan comes across and collects that one the ball will then quickly play it and the ball does find its way to Elias McCartney he'll run in field and it's eventually brought down on his own 10 metre line what will Bradford do then they will go forward through Vila Halafihi Vila Halafihi finds Amari Caro Amari Caro is then brought down on the 30 metre line on the second tackle Dewsbury offside at the play of the ball and I was just about to say that they're not stood square and the referee Nick Berry spots that so this will be a relieving penalty for Bradford and now in a bit of a discussion what they should do. I would uh, I would certainly say to Joe Key's kick for touch, which he does. And uh, it gets Bradford a further 12 metres from where the play was. So Bradford will start the play five metres in from the main stand side with Vila Ranafifi tapping it. And then now managed to get to the 40 metre line of the Dewsbury Rams through Ivan Hodgson. Damien Surinan then takes it up front and Damien Surinan gets on the front foot but he's brought down by four Dewsbury tacklers who are obviously seeing him as a danger man when Bradford gets some uh, go forward Joe Keys and Joe Keys links well he offloads to uh, Ethan Ryan Ethan Ryan wrapped up in the tackle but manages to offload to Mikel Aleski Mikel Aleski goes on a fantastic run and gets Bradford a metre shy of the 10 Dewsbury 10 metre line but quick play of the ball sees Joe Keys go right across the park trying to spot the gap and Joe Keys is going to be dragged into touch he was, he was picked up and dragged out there, wasn't he? He was looking for the gap there and, you know, put a couple of dummies on and it was paying off a little bit and just got caught at the end and, and thrown out. But, you know, got some great running down the middle of the pack there. They're, they're kind of running with a bit more commitment and can, intent now with Bradford. So uh, they're, they're getting a good quick play of the ball, which is making it difficult for the Dewsbury defence to get back on side. And we saw that with the penalty at the top. Um, so they need to just keep this pace and uh, intent open. It should be, uh, hopefully, pay off on their favour. Well, it should do, but uh, as, we, uh, as we've seen before, you know, Joe Keyes has often been uh, accused of not taking the ball to the line. He's taking the ball to the line, but the runners are not appearing for him. Yeah, indeed. I mean, he's, he's making some great breaks. I think, don't think it was quite expected there, but um, a bit maverick on his part, uh, just uh, going for the gaps himself. Well, as we talked there, Dewsbury uh, got the ball from the scrub, and they come up with an error and a knock-on, um, and Gareth Potts is the guilty man there so uh, a couple of uh, pats on the back for him from his Dewsbury team saying look forget about it it's still early stages we're still in this one at six apiece and uh, we're waiting for the uh, the referee is now calling for the sponge man to come and uh, I think it's is it a bit of blood on his uh, bottom lip there yeah it looks like it yeah so yeah so we're uh, a little stoppage in play then 
as we wait for uh, the sponge man to come on and uh, give some running repairs to the Dewsbury players. The referee's talking to the Bradford team at the scrum. He's certainly talking to Mikhail Alaliski and Liam Kirk there. And uh, he's, he's, I don't know what he's pointing out, but he's also having a word with Vila Alafifi. And I think he's just basically saying, you know, come on, guys, make the effort to get back when in defence. Corey Aston stands with the ball in hand. We wait for the scrum to be formed. The scrum is 20 metres, 15 metres in from this main stand side. And the ball comes out through Sam Alice. Sam Alice to Damien Surin and Damien Surin on to Ethan Ryan. Ethan Ryan is then wrapped up 15 metres shy of the Dewsbury try line. Damien Surin and then will straighten up. And he goes on another stronger run that gets Bradford inside the 10. And Bradford looking through some uh, quick hands here. But Ethan Ryan is wrapped up and he's then actually pushed back. So Bradford lose ground on that one. On the third tackle, what can Bradford do here? So we see Liam Kirk go forward. The only way that Liam Kirk knows is to uh, drop that shoulder and get stuck in. As Bradford in the centre of the park will look to do something through. Corey Aston steps to his right, then his left, and uh, is held just a metre shy of the line. A little chip kick through. That bounces off the Dewsbury defence. And uh, Bradford lacking a few ideas as we now see Dewsbury want to come away. And uh, Bradford in danger of being caught offside but uh, the referee's allowing play to go on as Dewsbury on the uh, second tackle managed to get right about 17 metres away from their try line and the ball will go through hands and eventually the referee does pull Bradford for, uh, for being offside. So that's been uh, that's been coming, Danica. Yeah, it has indeed. You know, we're 15 minutes into the game and it's the pace is fantastic. Bradford just needs to remember that. We, we, it's early in the stages. Keep the ball secure, go forward, set their plays up, set the platform and just play off the back of that. Well, Bradford have been guilty in the past of uh, committing, sort of like, you know, going and scoring a try and then coming up with an error and then piggybacking teams down, um, down the park. And we're seeing that here a little bit, you know, that um, Bradford come up with an error um, and and then that piggybacks obviously Dewsbury today down the park and Dewsbury now sit quite comfortably just over the 20 metre line on the uh, second tackle of this set and that's another great run from Toby Adamson who manages to get Dewsbury inside the uh, Bradford goals 10 the ball will go one way and uh, for Bradford they're muscling up in defence as uh, Dewsbury looked there they were going to score and they actually do score now so again the defence being caught out and accused of a little bit of napping, but going back to what we were saying, Danica, all from the uh, Bradford piggybacking teams down uh, down the park. Yeah, little mistakes giving uh, Dewsbury the yards there and uh, moving up the pitch. That defence there was just a little bit scrappy, you know, it's non-committal, um, lots of arms in rather than just getting in front of the ball and getting the shoulder in. It's obvious where the ball was going, we weren't reacting to it quick enough and it's paid off in Dewsbury's favour. So the score on the Providence scoreboard reads Dewsbury Rams 10, the Bradford Bulls 6. And the try is awarded to Aaron Brown, the uh, loose forward for Dewsbury. So just short of 17 minutes gone on this one. And uh, Dewsbury now in the lead for the first time this afternoon as Paul Sykes again sits the ball down and uh, he certainly likes to take his time does Paul Sykes before he kicks. The referee's not stopped the clock, so uh, again, I think he's just uh, telling Paul Sykes now, come on, get on with it. Um, you know, we've got a game to play. We're not here, in, we're here all afternoon. Yeah, well, Bradford needs to take a little bit of advice on that. Slow the game down, take the time a little bit, settle back into it, you know, and, and just go forward. When we've got, we've got the ball in hand and we're just getting straight line forward, we're making the yards. And, you know, and just a few of those set plays and get it up, make the platform, then we'll play from that. But settle it, go forward and make sure that we're keeping secure the ball and not making silly errors. Well, Paul Sykes then adds to his tally this afternoon with his second conversion to now make the score on the Providence scoreboard. Dewsbury Rams 12, the Bradford Bulls 6. You're listening to The Big Match Live on BCB 106.6 FM, brought to you in association with Providence supporting Bulls supporters home and away. So Bradford now, we wait for Bradford to get this one back underway. Lee Smith will start for the third time uh, this afternoon. And he kicks that one a little bit shallower, but eventually the ball does find its hands into the hands of Jack Tenby. And Jack Tenby, Teenby, sorry, does uh, does make uh, some good yardage. Manages to get to the uh, Dewsbury 10-metre line. Then another quick little inside pass. Dewsbury managed 
to uh, further advance down the park. They're now mecking on the third drive up to the Bradford Bulls 40 metre line on the third tackle. And Bradford muscling up in defence. And they're certainly being asked questions here by Dewsbury as Paul Sykes looks to send Michael Knowles through a, through a gap. And eventually Bradford give another penalty away. Damien Sirenen then. And the referee is now um, bringing the Bradford captain, uh, Sam Allis, who uh, is acting as deputy captain out there at this moment. And uh, I think he's saying, next one, and you're on a team warning. So, again, Bradford are going to have to be careful, Danica. Yeah, it's a little bit dubious, that, to be fair, you know, uh, getting the tackle, trying to slow the, the play of the ball down, you know, and it, just maybe lying on for a little bit too long there. But it's, it's, it could go. It could have gone either way, that, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's a 50-50 call, but uh, when you look out, you look out, innit? And a lot of these 50-50 calls for Bradford this season haven't gone Bradford's way. No, and now we just got to listen to him. You know, he's, he's giving him the warning now, and let's uh, win the floor, jump up quickly, make sure we're on side, and hopefully go. Well, fortunately for Bradford, Dewsbury, in their uh, enthusiasm through uh, Macaulay Hallett, have come up with a knock on. So that will see head and feed to Bradford as uh, a bit of a relieving uh, error there from Dewsbury. We've had just nearly 20 minutes on the clock here at the Tetley's Bitter Stadium. Dewsbury and uh, Dewsbury Rams 12 and Bradford Bull 6 we wait for the scrum to be formed so the scrum is formed and uh, Bradford will put in and we'll see the ball go down the uh, May, the fast hand tide the uh, covered terrace side as it's called here at the uh, stadium, we'll see James Bentley then James Bentley then is, uh, is absolutely poor laps as uh, there's a bit of a coming together of the players, but that's quickly sorted. James Bentley gets up to his feet. Yeah, and, it's a bit of a clothesline that one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. It was. It was certainly uh, a jaw rattle, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, if indeed. anything else. There's been a couple, uh, a couple of those this mo early on in the game, anyway. So uh, it's about time one of them got pulled up a little bit. Yeah, we expected a bit of a, a bit of an umdinger as well, didn't we? So it's, uh, it's certainly living up to it that there's going to be uh, one or two uh, tasty tackles, as they're uh, effectively called. Yeah, indeed. Just need to make the most of this now. We've got a few more yards behind our back. Uh, let's just get this play down the middle. So, Bradford then, through Mikhail Alaleski on the play of the ball, managed to get to the Dewsbury 30 minute line. There's a lot of, uh, lot of uh, messing around at the rook area, but Bradford again appealing to the uh, referee, saying, come on, you know, you've spoke to us about it, so it cuts both ways. Corey Aston then. Corey Aston offloads to Evan Hodgson. Evan Hodgson just manages to get around about 17 metres shy of the Dewsbury try line the ball will go to Corey Aston he'll go to the left and is eventually wrapped up there as uh, he took Mikel Aleski on a blind run that didn't manage to get the ball out to him so the ball will go to Joe Keyes Joe Keyes to James Bentley and we're now around about five metres shy of the Dewsbury try line on the fifth and last and that sees a little uh, chip over the top from uh, Lee Smith but that comes to nothing on the last tackle and uh, the ball goes dead, so Dewsbury will restart in the 20 metres, and they'll look to bring this ball back through Dale Morton. So Dale Morton takes the, uh, the first drive of this to the six, managed to get 37 metres away from his own try line, and uh, Dewsbury again will go to the big, big Pacman, as we see Jody Sharif then take a drive, and uh, he's then closely followed by Toby Adamson on the third drive of this set of six. And Bradford then now having to defend on their own 20 metre line as Dewsbury have gone from their own end of the pitch in uh, very very easy fashion and found the yards and they're still managing to go forward Dewsbury up to the Bradford Bulls 10 metre line then on the uh, on this set of six and that sees then the ball go to ground from Paul Sykes coming up with an error and uh, again Bradford get a let off Danica yeah indeed you know it seems that we pass our halfway line and our uh, defence uh, you know it picks up a little bit as we get clo well, closer to uh, their line but when they're coming at us it seems that we get a little bit panicky a little bit scrappy and uh, we're lucky there that that ball was just knocked on it gives us a little minute to settle and um, hopefully just re regather their thoughts a little bit you know and make our way back down ball in hand it's great we just need to settle in this defence and get back quick enough you know that tap 20 there Jews we did it really quickly and we were just about on side um, so they're they're really playing the advantages of all these penalties that they're getting so Bradford then will put the ball on the scrum the referee 
just blows his whistle. Now repacks the scrum, tells Corey Aston to get the ball in. Corey Aston gets the ball in, goes out to the open stand, Tiris side again through Lee Smith on a blind side run. Lee Smith is eventually wrapped up on the line, and again a little bit of afters in the uh, in the tackle as they clear the rut. Romari Cara takes another drive then, using his frame to try and uh, get some bulk forward. And uh, Sam Allis then uh, spots a little gap at the rook area, makes another run from around the rook area. James Bentley now with the ball will still go down that main stand to his side and eventually that sees Lee Smith wrapped up again. Bradford then with Liam Kirk will come back in, sit round on the fifth and last tackle and again afters at the play of the ball as Liam Kirk's trying to get up to quit that. Corey Aston then kicks on the last tackle. That will go into the hands of Dale Morton who knocks it back first but manages to get away from the Bradford tackle the first tackle from Ethan Ryan but is eventually picked up by Vila Halafihi and Evan Hodgson Evan Hodgson then doubling up on this one with Damien Surinan as uh, Jews were managing to slowly but surely get their way to their own 20 metre line and just managing to get over that 20 metre line on the third tackle so Jody Sharif then takes another drive forward he's met by Colton Roach, who's now on the park for Bradford. And Dewsbury very slow to play the ball again. It's not Bradford clearing the rook area slow, it's uh, it's Dewsbury very slow, but that one kicks deep and that goes to Ethan Ryan. Ethan Ryan will come one way, he'll come to the left and before straightening up in the centre of the park and he's eventually brought down just over his own 30 metre line. Ilias McCarney then, Ilias McCarney will run back towards the uh, open, well, the covered terrace side on the far side of this Dewsbury ground before he's wrapped up and Bradford edging the way forward managing to get to the halfway line on the third tackle through Sam Allis so what will Bradford do here and again a little bit of messing about at the rook area Ross uh, Peltier now has uh, joined the floor and uh, he uh, manages to get Bradford to the 40 metre line he's putting the ball through hands and again Bradford come up now and Bradford are lucky because Bradford now get a penalty the referee's saying there was a hand in there from uh, from Dewsbury from uh, Jordan Crowther and uh, I think that's uh, a relief Danica if anything else I think that's a very lucky call on Bradford's uh, in Bradford's favour there I'm not sure there was a hand in so much as a, as opposed to the ball being bounced out in contact but uh, we'll take it and uh, use it now hopefully so Evan Hodgson then will take the first drive as Bradford decide to tap that penalty and get to the 20 metre line we see uh, Sam Ellis take a little step forward then offloads to Corey Aston Corey Aston puts the ball through hands eventually the ball finds its way into the hands of Ethan Ryan Ethan Ryan slowly but surely gets up to play that one as the ball now comes back into the centre field and Colton Roach will take a drive forward and get Bradford 8 metres shy of this try line big Ross Peltier then, Ross Peltier offloads to Corey Aston, oh. Corey, that's a hand in on that one, so that's going to be a knock on and again, I think Bradford get off lightly Danica. Yeah indeed, it was a you know a, a bit of a risky pass there and uh, luckily Jewsman managed to get the fingers on but not quite a grab hold of it um, you know we get we get towards that, you know, 10 metres from the try line and we start to, to panic play a little bit, you know we're making the yards of the forwards like I've said earlier and Bradford just need to utilise that a little bit more some fresh legs on the pitch you know and uh, go forward they're struggling they're due to having to put you know three men into the tackle every time if we can get a quick play of the ball off that and utilise the gaps that that's created then uh, we'll come off you know with a, with a bit of, with a few more points hopefully well I think that's certainly uh, certainly something that Bradford should now be looking to exploit you know that every time Bradford and they send the likes of Surinan or Peltier or Carlton Roach in there, you know, these big lads that uh, Dewsbury are having to actually swamp them. So you only need one of those guys to manage to offload in the tackle and the gap's there and they're away, aren't they? You know, it's uh, it's it's as daft as it seems, it's clever rugby, isn't it? You yeah, know, it's simple you know. rugby, but clever rugby. Have a few on the side, you know, a little bit of chat, communication, let them know that you're there and then uh, just get that ball out as and when you can. You know, the, the guys, Dewsbury are going low, you know, and therefore they're not securing that ball up that much, so we need to get it out. Well, the wind's picked up here at uh, at the Tetley's uh, bit of stadium and the rain is coming down as the heavens have opened, but Bradford will restart this one. The ball goes into the scrum. Corey Aston then feeds Damien Surin and he's brought down on the first tackle. There's Bradford around about five metres shy. Ross Peltier barges to the line. The ball is stripped out of Ross Peltier and uh, drops the ball, but Dewsbury there 
and uh, we'll get the ball back and Dewsbury will restart on their own 20 metre line as the ball goes dead so a little bit of an error from Ross Peltier um, dropping the ball as he's going over the line but that gets now all the uh, hard work of Bradford undone as Dewsbury will come back with this one and eventually play now gets underway as uh, Everett is on for uh, Dewsbury he's a big lad is uh, uh, Toby Everett so what will Dewsbury do then on the third drive of this one they will manage to get over the halfway line and just inside the Bradford half Paul Sykes Paul Sykes is a little bit of a run around there shows and goes but again Bradford reading that one well as Colton Roach comes in and completes the tackle and uh, Sam Alice is in there and it's getting a little bit scrappy again but Bradford having to muscle up in defence and so far standing the test but Dewsbury will go with a little kick that will find its, its way into the hand of Ethan Ryan Ethan Ryan wraps that one up safely before being brought down as Bradford now will have the ball and come back up this, uh, up this Dewsbury pitch and Ilias McCarney eventually manages to find his way to the 10 metre line before he's wrapped up a quick play of the ball sees Bradford get a little bit of momentum but again Dewsbury there to meet them and uh, pick them off quite easy on that one as Bradford revert back to uh, running in ones with no support play and uh, really do need to uh, look at this now and get somebody running off the shoulder of these big men who when they're getting it towards the Dewsbury line are sucking in three four tacklers at a time and again Ross Peltier does that on the fifth and last Corey Aston kicks that one that one hits the wind and swirls away but that is connected by the fullback James Glover and uh, James Glover just takes that one back and uh, he now finds the hands of Dale Morton and Dale Morton brushes off one tackler then decides to go to the right hand side of the pitch and eventually is wrapped up by James Bentley so Dewsbury then, Dewsbury over on the uh, far stand side look to try and exploit the gap in the defence between Lee Smith and Amari Cara but that, uh, that gap's quickly covered and Dewsbury will go and keep managing to keep going through Aaron Brown and come back to the centre of the park but the ball comes loose, Bradford come up with the ball and Ethan Ryan is uh, now taken out by Paul Sykes and uh, the players come together and this one's been bubbling under and uh, it's certainly uh, a bit of steam is now starting to come out of the pot, Danica. Yeah, indeed. I think, you know, in, in Bradford's defence, in some respects, you know, we're, we're getting penalised for line on in the in the ropes, line on the tackles a bit too long. You know, Dewsbury have had their fair share of line on and not moving quick enough. It's going to be frustrating, it's going to be annoying, and that's just going to create errors. We just need to relax and um, try not to let it bother us too much. Well, as a referee, dispatched Paul Sykes to the sim bin. So Paul Sykes looks bemused and uh, again he's taking his time walking off the park. He's certainly uh, shuntering to the uh, Bradford Bulls players as he's going. He's certainly in no rush for this one. We see Sam Ellis come off and we see Scotty Moore come onto the park. So Scotty Moore will look to use his experience and his guile in this one to uh, settle the Bradford uh, Bulls team down. So Paul Sykes gets 10 minutes in the bin and... Uh, for the shot on Ethan Ryan. Bradford through Joe Keys will kick and manage to get to the halfway line. If nothing else, that's a good message to send out to the lads either side, you know. It, there's no messing around now. It's not. It's more about the rugby and less about the uh, the derby as such, you know. So yeah. um, let's hope it gets a bit more even on the, uh, the contact as well. So James Bentley then. James Bentley will start. He goes to his right and then cuts back to his left and he's eventually brought down 45 metres away from the Dewsbury try line the ball then finds its way to the hands of Ross Peltier Ross Peltier is picked up by three Dewsbury tacklers and again there's a bit of afters there but Ross just brushes it away as uh, Lee Smith now will come back and eventually feeds the ball back to uh, uh, well the ball's a bit basketball style there he's bouncing about before his feet Corey Aston wrapped up and Bradford have gone back slightly but Scott Moore in there now will feed Colton Roach Colton Roach manages to get Bradford towards the 20 metre line of Dewsbury and the ball now through hands will eventually go to Vila Halafihi and Vila Halafihi is in there and there's uh, Bradford a little bit lacking ideas 
are stuck on the 20 metre line and Corey Afton then runs that one towards the line, kicks it through, that's collected by James Glover and that's oh, way, way too easy for uh, Dewsbury in my liking and now Dewsbury get a penalty so Bradford again coming up with uh, with an error and uh, it's it's playing into Yeah, it is indeed. You know, Bradford just looked a bit scatty there, a little bit uh, disorganised. There wasn't much communication. It was like very much a one-up play that wasn't really paying off. Um, so again, just settle it. We know we're coming to the close of this half soon, and they just need a few words and settle this back again. Well, the score on the Providence scoreboard reads: Dewsbury Rams 12, Bradford Bulls 6. 32 minutes played here in the first half as Dewsbury are in possession, and they will slowly but surely make their way into the Bradford half on the third set third tackle of this set and then managing just just 30 meters shy of the uh, Bradford try line as uh, again Dewsbury straighten up offloading the tackle the ball passing about before we see a knock on and eventually it finds its way into the hands of Scott Moore Scott Moore kicks sorry Scott Moore puts the ball through hands eventually Ethan Ryan came up with a kick and uh, we now see a foot race that's going to see the, uh, the Dewsbury winger, um, Gareth Potts, picked that one up. And I think Bradford were uh, realising there that the player's going to come back for the first error. So no matter what they did on the first set or the first uh, drive, they'll get the ball back at the scrum. Yeah, and that's what uh, referee Nick Berry did. So I was a little bit surprised when I saw him kicking and, uh, and throwing it about on the first set, on the first tackle, and I thought, right, but then obviously uh, the referee's called it back for the knock-on and uh, that's going to work in Bradford's favour. Yeah, very lucky for Bradford there. Like I said earlier, you know, this is a little bit maverick from Bradford. You know, it doesn't seem to be that settled. It doesn't seem to be, uh, um, you know, that there's, there's no kind of unity here. It's a little bit of uh, individual play coming off here. And, um, you know, lucky for us, it's, it's come, back, come back to our penalty and we can try and get the ball up the, the pitch and get some set plays off. So Bradford restart then and uh, Damien Surin from the scrum manages to get to the uh, his own 20 metre line before feeding or going down in the tackle but then is the ball goes to Ilias McCann Ilias McCann is, is uh, eventually wrapped up on the second tackle and then on the third tackle we see Evan Hodgson wrapped up as Joe Keyes will go towards the line he takes a little bit of a dart steps off to his left and cuts back to his right the ball will still go down the, uh, the far stand Cirrus side as uh, eventually James Bentley is wrapped up and the ball will come back on the fifth and last to Joe Keyes. Joe Keyes puts a bit of a spiral kick. That's a test there. That's a fantastic kick from Joe Keyes as uh, Bradford come up with the ball and the referee says play on. So uh, rather than form the scrum for the knock on, Bradford will get possession. What can Bradford do here? Evan Hodgson then. Evan Hodgson will straighten up and he'll manage to get just inside the 10 metre line of the Dewsbury half. Corey Aston. Corey Aston feeds Colton Roach. Colton Roach goes towards the sticks as the play is now in the centre of the park. And Dewsbury again standing strong in defence. Scotty Moore, a little shimmy, finds Joe Keys. Joe Keys manages to uh, manages to offload to uh, Ethan Ryan. And uh, Ethan Ryan's a class is being held up over the line, so the ball will come back to the 10 metre line. And uh, Bradford will be quick to play that. As we see Brandon Wilkinson now on for uh, a run, his first run of the afternoon. He takes the first drive. The ball goes to the left hand side of the sticks. And now the referee has said that that was a forward pass and he's given the ball to Dewsbury at the scrum feed. So again, Danica, when Bradford are in that um, prime position and could have really put Dewsbury to the test there, you know, five minutes left on this one, get the score just before half-time, then play a possession set, if you like, you know, to close the game down and get the scores level, but they come up with the area again. Yeah, we're just not finishing it off, are we? You know, as we're getting kind of close to that line and then uh, for some reason or other, it's not going in our favour. But, you know, it was great then. We managed to settle it down, you know. Moore then was talking a lot more. He was uh, being a lot more direct in where the ball was going to go and where he wanted their, his players to go. And that just needs to carry on through the second half. You know, we just saw th saw that that little phase there. Yeah, we didn't finish it, but it was it looked a lot better, a lot more composed. 
They certainly looked a lot stronger going forward, didn't they? And they certainly had the uh, um, the linkage right, which obviously, rather than going in ones, you know, we, we've actually got a couple of runners in. So that is allowing that little bit of momentum. But it's it's just that killer punch, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> just need to finish it off. And I'm not sure what that is and where it's going to come from. But, yeah, a little bit frustrating there for Bradford. But um, let's hope they can uh, figure it out for the second half. So Dewsbury then will form the scrum and get the feed on their own 10 metre line, around about 20 metres in from the uh, from the far touch line. The ball will go into the scrum, the ball comes out, and uh, Dewsbury then managing to, uh, on the first drive, get away from their own try line and up to around about 15 metres away before uh, Cotton Roach effectively brings the Dewsbury uh, pull back down in that tackle. And again now, Bradford through Evan Hodgson, wrapping up Everett, will, uh, will look to tackle in numbers and Bradford being tested here, but Dewsbury will go. And don't forget Paul Sykes in the sim bin, so Bradford have a one-man advantage, but Dewsbury managing to uh, to uh, not let that affect him at this stage as they look to get forward. They are inside the uh, Bradford half now on the uh, fifth and last tackle. This will see a little kick. That will find touch and take the pressure off. And a little kick from Michael Knowles then who's uh, seems to be taking over the uh, kicking responsibilities in the absence of Paul Sykes. Bradford will get the uh, pudding at the scrum, just shy of their own 20 metre line. And uh, again, we have five minutes left on the clock. The score still reads, Dewsbury Rams 12, Bradford Bulls 6. And it's a bit of a, well, I think since uh, the foray and the little bit of a gathering that we had, Danica, when uh, we saw Paul Sykes eventually march to the sim bin, um, it's gone a little bit flat. As this yeah, one. maybe that's what we needed. Did that little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of feistiness at the rook and at the breakdown there. But um, it, you know, it, apart from the fact we haven't really utilised the fact that it, we've got a, a one-woman advantage, you know, Bradford do look a little bit more composed, less fiery, maybe you look less committed, but more composed. There's a fine line between what you want there. What do you want the uh, the quick, unorganised play, or do you want this to uh, see Bradford kind of put on some of their moves? So we see Bradford then through Evan Hodgson, managed to uh, manage to get to the uh, Dewsbury 30 metre line. Scott Moore in action half feeds Corey Aston. Corey Aston on to Colton Roach. A little drop ball there to uh, Brandon Wilkinson. Sees Brandon make his way to the 20 metre line on the fifth and last. What will Bradford do? Joe Keys. Joe Keys finds James Bentley. James Bentley with a little chip and Dewsbury have to kick that dead. So Bradford will get the ball back here on this set. James Glover then being... Uh, being uh, well, the referee has now given a penalty to Bradford. And he's talking to the Dewsbury, uh, the Dewsbury players. I think he's saying that uh, you're offside there. And uh, actually, uh, now, he's going, back to the, uh, he's going back to the line. Blows the whistle, restarts this one then. So Bradford through Brandon Wilkinson will go towards the sticks on the first drive. Four minutes left on the clock. Scotty Moore drops his shoulder, will go one way, and he'll look to... Uh, to get Bradford, what, two metres shy of the try line as we see Ross Peltier takes the ball, little scoop from the rook, that's a popular try for Ross and Ross Pelt scores to bring Bradford to 10 points. Well, I think it certainly helps seeing uh, Scotty Moore take the ball and uh, his run sort of like created the gap, if you like, and then that little quick play because Dewsbury defence at sixes and sevens, if you like, that saw the gap appear and uh, obviously... Uh, saw the big frame of Ross uh, dive over the line. He looked like he was going for his KFC dinner there, the way that he went in. And he'll not thank me for saying it, I know he won't, but uh, he's a good lad, his belt, he's a good lad. So, Corey Aston then brings the, uh, brings the scores level. And uh, we're now, with uh, two minutes left of this half, Dewsbury Rams 12, Bradford Bulls 12 on the Providence scoreboard as... Uh, Paul Sykes awaits to uh, to come back onto the field of play. So, Dewsbury will get this one back underway. And Paul Sykes does rejoin the uh, the game now. So, Dewsbury back up to their full complement. And I think, uh, well, yeah, Paul Sykes looks, just acknowledges the referee as Dewsbury uh, will get this one back underway eventually. And they do. That's a bit of a... Uh, uh, well, I don't know what that kick would be described. Kick yeah, yeah, there, I'd, yeah, I'd have said a dirty kick rather yeah. than anything else. And Bradford, through uh, Ilias McCarney, knock on. 
when uh, an and possession and and advantage back to Dewsbury with a minute, just under a minute left on the Provident clock. Yeah, and Dewsbury packing down quickly there, trying to utilise all the time they've got in this uh, first half. So, Paul Sykes will calm everything down. Dewsbury, we wait for Dewsbury to uh, form the scrum as uh, Michael Knowles will uh, will feed the scrum. But uh, the referee's now saying, right, come on then, let's uh, let's get it on. The ball goes in the scrum, it comes out, eventually just find Paul Sykes. He steps off to his right, will then feed James Glover, and James Glover will go for a little run down on the, uh, on the uh, far stand side. The ball will then come back into the centre of the park on the second tackle of this set of six, which uh, I think Dewsbury will just run the clock down here unless uh, Paul Sykes got other ideas, and he has. He's got a little kick over the top there, but eventually that's collected by Corey Aston, and Corey Aston then feeds Evan Hodgson. Evan Hodgson is then wrapped up, and Bradford will should, through safety now, want to play out this one. As, uh, as a referee says, that's it. The hoot has gone. The teams are out, and uh, we wait for... Uh, Paul Sykes to get us back underway. Bradford will play now from right to left, and uh, and we'll go towards the uh, the open end terrace uh, as we wait for Paul Sykes to uh, kick this one. He does eventually find his kicking shoes. The wind hurls that one up, and it falls just shy of the 10 metre line. And Ilias McCarney will pick that up. And Ilias McCarney then will take the first drive of the second half and manage to get Bradford to the 20 metre line. As Scott Moore goes in there, Scott Moore then feeds Evan Hodgson. Evan Hodgson in his second game with the uh, Open Edge team making his uh, uh, presence felt and making his uh, making his uh, drives count. As eventually we see the third drive of the afternoon from Ross Peltier who manages to get Bradford to the 40 metre line before Brandon Wilkinson takes on the uh, mantle and manages to get Bradford just shy of the halfway line on the fourth tackle. Scotty Moore then goes for a scoop from. Uh, from the acting half and uh, Bradford on the fifth and last will now find Joe Keys. Joe Keys will put that one up and that will see Oscar Thomas and Lee Smith chase after that one and this sees the Dewsbury uh, fullback juggle with it before he's wrapped up by Oscar Thomas sorry by uh, Amari Carr Oscar's not even playing today are you apologise and uh, <laughs> um, I can't say the look alike that's just me uh, getting it wrong so I do apologise and I apologise to Amari as well because I know uh, he'll speak to you later. Anyway, Dewsbury then with Everett will come. That's Toby Everett for Dewsbury will come back up the park and uh, we'll put the ball through hands. Paul Sykes then moves the ball to the far stand side as Toby Adamson takes that drive and uh, Paul, Paul Sykes will kick. That's eventually gathered by Ethan Ryan. And Ethan Ryan gets Bradford to the uh, 30 metre line. As Bradford will, will now go forward with this set of six. James Bentley to uh, Lee Smith. Lee Smith goes to his left and then comes back comes back in part, finds Ilias McCann. Ilias McCann has managed to find a little bit of a gap and exploits that gap and eventually gets hauled down on the halfway line on the uh, third tackle, Scott Moore, Scott Moore to Colton Roach, Colton Roach, Joe Keys, James Bentley, through hands to Amari Caro, and Amari Caro goes without the ball and uh, eventually the referee says, nope, that's a knock on so whenever then, when Bradford certainly Amari Caro, all he had to do was pick that ball up and race away because the uh, the gap was there, Danica Yeah, and there we just go back to what we said earlier settle this ball and complete these sets you know and in all fairness to him that ball was a little bit you know it came great through the hands you know great pace and then it just at the end not totally convinced it was an easy easy ball to catch anyway but um yeah let's just settle this down and get into the game before we start throwing the ball around i think well we see a bit of a stoppage here in play at this moment in time while Ilias mccarney is down and uh, it looks like he may have picked up a knock on his ankle he's been treated by the physio the referee is walking back towards where the scrum awaits to be formed. And uh, he's just speaking to one or two Dewsbury players. Phyllis McCarney, thankfully, is back up to his feet, so we'll rejoin the uh, defensive line. Dewsbury will put him through Paul Sykes, which eventually happens now, and the clock restarts. Still, Dewsbury Rams 12, Bradford Bulls 12. 
and Bradford now having to uh, having to defend. But Lucas Walshaw will uh, will uh, certainly uh, enjoy that one and uh, against his former club. And he manages to find Toby Everett, and Toby Everett gets Dewsbury to the 40 metre line. Then the uh, Bradford Bulls 40 metre line as Dewsbury will look to step up the pace of the play of the ball and go down that main the uh, fast anterior side before being wrapped up on the third tackle they'll now come on the inside as uh, the wind picks up here at uh, the uh, bit of stadium Dewsbury then putting the ball through hands eventually finds Fall Sykes Fall Sykes brings the ball towards his main stand side before managing to offload and sees Dewsbury then brought down through Jordan Crowther just eight metres shy of the uh, Bradford Bulls line Paul Sykes kicks that forward on the fifth and last it bounced off Ross Peltier's chest he then kicks it again and uh, eventually that's picked up by uh, Ethan Ryan he plays the ball quickly to Brandon Wilkinson Brandon Wilkinson gets to the uh, 10 metre line of his uh, for his team before feeding Amari Caro Amari Caro takes a drive and gets Bradford to their own 20 on the second tackle then so what will Bradford do Scott Moore Scott Moore to James Bentley James Bentley's picked off quite easily and there's a bit of a bit of an edge shot goes in there and uh, James Bentley is down now the referee's not done anything about it the touch just certainly hasn't done anything about it and I think everybody sat in front of us Danica saw that I think even the man on the number 47 bus going towards Dewsbury saw that yeah that wasn't too pretty was it a bit unnecessary uh, to say the least you know, but it gives Bradford a little bit of a, a, a time now just to compose itself. Looking a little bit disorganised again. They didn't seem like anybody really wanted the ball, to be honest with you, just in that, that little set place there. So a um, little bit of a discussion, a little bit of communication and get themselves settled and, and, and set back up to a start again. A couple of quick hellos then. Hello and good afternoon to our regular statistician, Kev Field. Thanks for the stats again, Kev. Hello, G-Star. Also, good afternoon to... Uh, to uh, Chris and Dawn listening in Thornton thanks for listening in as Bradford then will restart this play and uh, on the fifth and last tackle as the referee puts his hand up Cotton Roach is brought down then ball goes to Joe Keys. Joe Keys kicks and that is a fantastic kick that pushes Dewsbury back behind their own try line now can the Bradford defence get up there and manage to pin the uh, Dewsbury full back down and they manage to do that and bring him down on his own 10 metre line so Dewsbury will now find this hard going as James Bentley picks up the pace and Bradford push the Dewsbury Rams back towards their own try line through James Bentley and Brandon Wilkinson then muscling up in the tackle as Dewsbury will now come down this main stand side and Lee Smith and Amari Caro muscling up in defence to eventually bring down Lucas Walshaw as the ball goes on the inside and again James Bentley getting through a whole getting through some excellent tackling stint here with Scott Moore as Dewsbury will look to come again as we see uh, Jordan Crowther take a drive and a little kick eventually over the top from Paul Sykes goes behind Ethan Ryan eventually Ethan Ryan picks that up feeds to Elias McCartney Elias McCartney not really expecting the ball but manages to uh, stand strong and get to the Bradford Bulls 20 metre line Bradford a little bit slow to get back here we see players still ambling back on the second tackle that sees Vila Halafihi wrapped up Ethan Ryan then eventually uh, picks up the ball and goes on a little scoot he gets Bradford to the 30 metre line before Lee Smith spots the gap and Lee Smith gets Bradford up towards the halfway line quick play of the ball from Bradford we'll see Ellis McCartney feed Ethan Ryan Ethan Ryan is uh, eventually wrapped up the ball comes out and uh, the referee says play on and uh, eventually Carlton Roach is brought down on the fifth and last tackle as Bradford sit just shy of the uh, Dewsbury 20 metre line and a little kick from Corey Aston that will go high and be a tester that falls straight into the hands of Gareth Perks and Gareth Perks races away before eventually being wrapped up by Joe Keyes and Joe Keyes eventually concedes a penalty and a uh, fantastic run from uh, Gareth Potts that got him towards the uh, halfway line. And then Joe Keyes just uh, messing around at the play of the ball. And I think Joe Keyes would have been better just uh, letting him get up and play it. Yeah, that was unnecessary from Joe Keyes there. That's resulted in the, uh, in the penalty. And that was exactly what Bradford don't need at the minute. 
So Lucas Walshaw then will tap and go, and he'll get Dewsbury up to the 20 metre line as, uh, as Lee Smith and uh, James Bentley going on the tackle again. And Dewsbury certainly looking hungry and wanting to uh, find chinks in this Bradford defence. Now in the centre of the park, a little quick play. We'll see the ball move through hands, and Brad Dewsbury will look to find a gap, but eventually that gap's quickly closed as the ball goes through hands. Eventually, an error finds Ilias McCartney come up with the ball, and uh, Bradford get out of jail through Dewsbury's error. Now the referee's going to blow the whistle, he's going to call knock on and give the feed and put in to Bradford. So Danica, a little bit of a a little bit of an error fest from Dewsbury, giving. Uh, possession back to Bradford. Yeah, they definitely look like the hungrier side though the second half. They've come out um, a much fierier and you know and, and hung, more hungry for the uh, for the points, you know, and Bradford just uh, look like they've eased off a little bit, maybe um, switched off at half time and just need to find their feet a little again and hopefully this you know Juice Reserve is gonna give them the opportunity to do that. Well we've had nearly eight minutes played of the uh, of the second half. As Dewsbury make a substitute and that will see Rob Spicer come on for the four. I was just having a look there. Aaron Brown. Anyway, Bradford put in at the scrub and uh, eventually the ball comes out and that finds its way to uh, Ross Peltier. Ross Peltier manages to keep going and uh, the referee's not shout held yet. He'll give a penalty to Bradford and uh, Ross Peltier hadn't gone down in the tackle and he was still getting momentum forward there. <laughs> that should and, have been uh, called held a lot earlier than yeah. it was. But I think Nick Bennett let that one go and eventually Paul Sykes knocks the ball out of uh, Peltier's hand and I think Peltier has been a bit of a, uh, how can I put it, he's been clever there in what he's done but it does get Bradford into the uh, Dewsbury half as the referee now brings Dewsbury back on side. Bradford will start on their uh, Dewsbury 40 metre line with James Bentley taking the first drive of this set of six. The score remains Dewsbury 12, Bradford 12. You're listening to the big match live on BCB 106.6 FM. As Scott Moore plays that one, eventually finds Brandon Wilkinson, and Brandon Wilkinson knocks on in the tackle, and the referee says, no, yep, definitely a knock-on. The Dewsbury players rush to uh, congratulate. So Bradford get the advantage, do all the hard work, and then come up with the error again, Danica. So this consistency that we've said has been missing all season, and again, it shows... Again, the uh, the consistency is there, but the consistency is that you know they'll consistently make errors. Yeah, that's it. Uh, consistently incomplete, you know, uh, with the sets and things like that. But you know, like I said before, the, you know the weather's not that conducive to this uh, the flu plane. They need to be aware of that, and uh, that just means looking after this ball just a little bit more than they are doing right now. So Dewsbury then will look to uh, will look to come away from their own 20 metre line, and Paul Sykes is uh, in there looking for runners and eventually the ball is wrapped up. The referee does shout held, and uh, again, a little bit of a messing about of the play of the ball, and Bradford caught offside, so that will uh, certainly help Dewsbury, and they'll piggyback Dewsbury back up the field here. Paul Sykes will uh, will kick to touch, and he'll, uh, he'll look to drive this deep, as he does, and that bounces right in front of us, and... Uh, <laughs> uh, Somebody nearly lost the beer in the uh, in the stand. Anyway, play continues. Dewsbury then will go on the hunt, and uh, the ball still live in the centre of the park. And uh, Aaron then Aaron Brown will go. Uh, not Aaron Brown, sorry. It will be oh Aaron Ollett. Sorry, I'm getting the two Aaron's mixed up. But then Toby Everett takes the ball towards the sticks. He's held up a metre short of the line and uh, now Bradford concede a penalty and uh, there's a few uh, a few fingers pointing there and a few uh, a few words being had but Bradford give a penalty away to Dewsbury and uh, a quick tap and he will be uh, he will be held up the ball comes loose that's a knock on and uh, what's the referee going to give here because uh, the ball's now being kicked dead by uh, by Bradford but he's going to say no. Let's. Uh, he's held up over the line. Let's restart that on the uh, Bradford 10 metre line. So play will restart with Dewsbury. Dewsbury will find Everett. Everett is eventually brought down by uh, by Carlton Roach and Ross Peltier. But Dewsbury will bring the ball through Paul Sykes towards his main stand side. Paul Sykes is yet to be wrapped up. He's dancing one way and eventually he's brought down 
by Joe Keys and James Bentley. The ball will move back then towards the centre of the park. And that man Everett again, Toby Everett for uh, Dewsbury, spills the ball. And uh, Bradford will get the uh, possession back here, which will relieve. And Bradford celebrate as if it's their, uh, as if it's the birthday, Danica. <laughs> yeah, they're just really lucky there, aren't they? They've been uh, camped down here now for a bit too long uh, for both our lack and probably theirs as well. So um, an opportunity to get out of our half and uh, make the yards up the pitch, I think. So now, I, if 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 you were so sort of like on the on on the part now, Danica, and you was uh, playing in this Bradford team, what would you be saying to your teammates? Well, you know, let's settle down, let's just keep possession of this ball, let's get a quick scoop set out of here, give it to the backs, get some yards, and then uh, play it through the forward to settle the platform, and then we can look to start playing. Ross Peltier then will take the first drive of this set of six. He gets Bradford over their own 10 metre line. Scotty Moore will scoop from the acting, well, scoop from the rook, and he'll manage to get Bradford to the 20 metre line before being wrapped up as James Bentley will take the next drive. And eventually, James Bentley is picked off there with the. Uh, well, with a bit of a bone crunching tackle, but managed to get. Great tackle from Dewsbury, that was. Yeah, yeah, managed to get up. But then Ross Peltier will uh, muscle and bustle his way forward and get Bradford over their own 40 metre line. Dewsbury now, Bradford now inside the Dewsbury half with Damien Surin on the fifth and last. So Bradford will look to find Joe Keys. Joe Keys will uh, put this one high again and be a tester for James Glover. James Glover takes that one and is eventually wrapped up by Amari Cara and Lee Smith before being. Uh, allowed to get up and play the ball so Dewsbury then will look now to try and exploit a gap in the Bradford defence but Bradford standing tall or standing uh, certainly uh, being able to close Dewsbury down with uh, a little bit of ease on this set of six as the ball goes through hands and they'll move the ball quickly across the park moving the ball from the, uh, from the right hand side to the left hand side before the Dewsbury player is eventually wrapped up. Then we see a fantastic run again from Toby Everett, who uh, certainly making inroads into the Bradford uh, half before the ball finds Paul Sykes on the fifth and last. Paul Sykes kicks, finds Ethan Ryan. Ethan Ryan picks that one up, and Ethan Ryan will uh, will go one way. Eventually, he's, uh, he's brought down by Lucas Walshaw on this main stand side. Amari Carroll, then Amari Carroll picks the ball up, goes on the inside and eventually he's brought down just over his own 40 metre line as uh, Joe Keys finds Damien Surinan. Damien Surinan hits and spins, manages to offload in the tackle. Joe Keys then spots the gap and Joe Keys just a little bit slow to react there but uh, if it had been a bit quicker and uh, expected the ball I think he'd have been away. But Bradford then through Evan Austin will go down the uh, far terrace side now and eventually Evan Austin's wrapped up but Ross Peltier, sorry Colton Roach takes uh, the ball and Carlton Roach manages to get Bradford just shy of the 30 mid line inside the Dewsbury half on the fifth and last Joe Keys with a deft little kick this time but again Dewsbury managed to field that one and eventually Amari Carroll and Lee Smith wrap up the Dewsbury attacker with the ball Ross Peltier then and Damien Surin double up in the tackle on the Nets drive so Dewsbury two drives gone in this set of six will bring the ball to the centre part and eventually Damien Surinan goes in and uh, has to muscle up to uh, eventually pin the Dewsbury player to the floor. Toby Everett then. Toby Everett will take another drive before he's wrapped up and manages to uh, inch his way towards the Dewsbury Rams 40 metre line. So Dewsbury not uh, really making any yardage in this set of six. On the fifth and last, they still remain inside their own half. But eventually that finds Michael Knowles. And Michael Knowles puts a kick that doesn't really go anywhere, but he's eventually picked up by Ilias McCarney on the uh, fast and terrace side. And uh, Ilias McCarney gets up and plays the ball to Ethan Ryan as Liam Kirk and Mikhail Adaleski come on and they replace Ross Peltier and Carlton Roach in this uh, second half. 15 minutes gone of this second half. The score still remains. Dewsbury 12, Bradford 12. With Bradford with the ball in hand through James Bentley. Will look to try and get something going. The ball comes out and Bradford get a penalty. Lucas Walshaw and Paul Sykes then absolutely both niggling at James Bentley. And James Bentley doing all he can. He's a strong lad, is James. But uh, eventually, uh, you know, they rip the ball off him and Bradford get the penalty. Yeah, yeah, lucky there again. Uh, but, you know, Bradford have, you know, we were talking about their inconsistencies. One thing they have been consistent with is their contacts at the minute. And they've managed to keep Dewsbury in their own half for the majority of this half. And, you know, and that's a. Uh, Credit to them and, uh, and and putting in the shoulder and getting that 
that ball secured and uh, the players down. Play continues then. Scott Moore goes one way and Scott Moore comes to his left. Eventually feeds James Bentley and James Bentley's brought down a metre shy of the uh, Dewsbury try line. What will Bradford do? Still keep down that side and Lee Smith crashes over after a good feed from Scott Moore to eventually the referee gives a signal. That's a try. A well worked try then as Bradford came down the blind side and uh, eventually punished the Dewsbury defence. 17 minutes gone in the second half. Jewsbury Rams 12, Bradford Bulls 16. Yeah, that's a really deserved try that from Bradford. You know, they've kept their defence strong this half and then, like we say, utilise the errors come from Dewsbury and then really simple play. Simple hands, we've settled the ball down and we've got it out wide and managed to go over the white line. So, all credit to Bradford there. It's uh, very, very much deserved. Well, again, I think it's just been a matter of time for Bradford to actually find a toehold in this game, Danica. And I think that... Um, you know, through his guy, like we said when uh, when Scott Moore came on, that uh, he settled things down a little bit. Bradford certainly don't seem as panicky in uh, you know the way that they're going forward and playing out the sets of six. There doesn't seem to be that panic that there was in the first half. No, and not yeah, not at all. And yeah, Moore's done a great job. You know, we've, we've just seen the the interchange there with uh, Peltier and Roach, and they were putting in a really good. Uh, Good, good shift there and they were they've helped to kind of settle this back down again so it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, they manage without the two of those but yeah Scotty Moore you can see him he's pointing the finger he's doing a lot of chat and he's uh, telling lads what he wants and where to go so that ultimately that's the best thing you need on the pitch you need somebody to really take charge and to, to direct the game well Corey Aston strikes that one and just pulls it slightly short of the uprights then so the score remains on the Providence scoreboard Jewsbury Rams 12, Bradford Bulls 16. You're listening to the Big Match Live on BCB 106.6 FM, brought to you in association with Provident, supporting Bulls supporters on the way. Don't forget, you can tweet us using the hashtag BCB Bulls and follow us on Facebook. Your comments and your feedback are also always welcome. Hobbo's not here today, he's on holiday, so if you want to uh, message Hobbo, please feel free to do so. I'm sure I'll be uh, listening in, in the Caribbean, as uh, Paul Sykes strikes that one. And... Uh, Elias McCartney lets it bounce before collecting it, but eventually gets the ball up to uh, 15 metres away from his own try line. Scott Moore in at acting half. Scott Moore finds Liam Kirk, and Liam Kirk takes his first drive of this second half. Scott Moore then finds Mikhail Aleski. Mikhail Aleski, as we say, replacing uh, Ross Peltier, will get Bradford to their own 30 metre line on the third tackle, and Ricky Judy Sharif is in there, but not letting, uh, not letting. Bradford play the ball quicker and uh, Corey Aston then kicks the ball and that eventually goes out on the full so that's another error when I don't really see why he uh, had the need to kick there on the uh, fourth tackle when uh, when Bradford could have certainly taken another drive and gone into the Dewsbury half Danica no no idea and so saw in the first half we, we uh, got the points on the board and then uh, it all went to pot a little bit and hopefully that's going to, he's going to realise there that it wasn't quite the right thing to do when we're just going to settle the play back down again. So we wait for the scrum to be formed and uh, eventually it is formed. The ball goes in the scrum and comes out with the possession in the hands of Dewsbury. So Bradford muscle up in defence then as uh, the Dewsbury player is brought down around about 25 metres shy of the uh, Bradford uh, try line. Jordi Sharif then will now get uh, Dewsbury up towards the uh, 10 metre line of the Bradford Bulls on the second drive as Paul Sykes goes in at acting half and uh, eventually uh, does a little run around that sees Dewsbury now inch their way just uh, probably a metre shy of the uh, Bradford Bulls try line but again the ball goes through hands as uh, as Dewsbury looks to spread the play Paul Sykes eventually finds the uh, fullback James Glover before he's wrapped up and uh, he looks to uh, have gone down a little bit heavy in that one. Amari Caro and James Bentley, the uh, the tacklers for Bradford on that one. But uh, James Glover, the fullback of Dewsbury, a little bit slow to uh, to uh, to get up. He didn't did not like that tackle, did he? At all? No. It's, uh, not looking in great shape. No, certainly not. As uh, Amari Caro just goes back in and uh, taps the uh, James Glover on his back to make sure he's all right. As the uh, physio and the club doctor have both talked to uh, both talked to him, he's back up on his feet, which is good. So he will uh, he will play the ball on the third, and Bradford still having to defend. The referee starts the game again, and that sees Lucas Walshaw 
eventually held up over the line and uh, Joe Keyes did well to get underneath Lucas Walshaw there because uh, he looked for all intents and purposes keen on scoring against his former employers. <laughs> so we wait now, the referee's going to bring play back. Fifth and last tackle as uh, due through Paul Sykes. Paul Sykes will put a little kick through and uh, that's his Joe Keyes having to kick that one dead. So Dewsbury will get the ball back with the dropout but... Uh, Thankfully, Bradford's defence switched on there, Danica. Yeah, just about. You know, we saw the consistency when they're in the when they're in Dewsbury's half. You know, with the defence, and when it comes back to our half, it kind of the, that panic kind of sets in a little bit. Um, you know, Scotty Moore there's putting in a putting in a great shift, and he's uh, get, putting his body totally on the line there for Bradford, and uh, is eager to uh, to go again and again and again. So uh, all credit where it's due. There, he uh, definitely held that was key when holding that try, try up. Another good after, quick good afternoon then to uh, regular listen, uh, uh, Gary in Tenerife. Good afternoon, Gary. We know uh, you're enjoying the game and uh, hopefully sunning yourself in lovely sunny Tenerife. So uh, likely to, uh, well, it's good to inform you that Bradford are leading this one 16 points to 12 after after 60 minutes on the uh, Provident clock. Dewsbury in possession then, and Dewsbury in the dropout. Manage on the uh, slowly but surely to enter their way towards a 30 metre line at Bradford. And Bradford again in defence, having to muscle up. And uh, Dewsbury certainly uh, asking questions as the ball comes through hands. And eventually, Dewsbury are brought down on the Bradford Bulls 10 metre line. So Dewsbury, that looked forward. Oh, a little bit forward, that one. That did look forward. It looked that far forward. It was in next week's game. But uh, the referee says no. Fifth and last tackle then. And Dewsbury are... Uh, Around about two metres shy of the Bradford try line as they'll put the ball through hands, a little kick, that ricochets off legs and that sees a foot race now and the referee's going to blow his whistle and bring that back and uh, he's consulting with his touch judge. Yeah, I'm not so sure what he's given there. But it's and come back given, in our favour. He's given a penalty to Bradford and said that Dewsbury were offside from the, uh, from the kick. So... Will not complain if it goes in Bradford's favour. That's uh, that's all good. But Bradford really do need to uh, to settle this down. Uh, Corey Aston then will kick for touch. Sends that one deep. And Bradford will restart on their own 30 metre line. There's a quick play from uh, Vila Halafihi finds Evan Hodgson. Evan Hodgson then manages to get Bradford to the 40 metre line now. As uh, Scott Moore will go in. Scott Moore will feed Liam Kirk. Liam Kirk drops his shoulder, continues his run to the left and is eventually hauled down just shy of his own, well, the halfway line. The ball quickly goes through hand. Joe Keys. Joe Keys finds Ethan Ryan. Ethan Ryan, lovely uh, twist of the hips and a little step off there. Spots the gap, but it's eventually brought down on the uh, Dewsbury Rams 40 metre line. Damien Surinan, hit and burst, looks for the hit and spin, looking to offload in the tackle, but nobody there for him as uh, Scott Moore now picks up the ball and will take a few steps, finds Corey Aston. Corey Aston eventually finds the uh, Brandon Wilkinson as the ball goes to uh, Corey Aston. Sorry for the little per pause in play there, but I was just wondering what was going to go going to go on. And that was on the uh, on the fifth and last tackle that Bradford came up with the error. The deep inside the uh, the Dewsbury half, but uh, handing the ball back to Dewsbury on their own 30 metre line. As the referee now says, play on. So, Dewsbury will look to come back up the park. And again, we'll go in search of a score to try and uh, bring them level in this one. But, managing to uh, get to their own 40 metre line before Bradford having to muscle up an defence. The ball comes loose. And then, as the ball comes loose, we're going to see what happens here now because uh, the referee is, is looking and is going to give the feed to Bradford and go for the first knock-on off the Dewsbury player, which was uh, Lucas Walshaw that uh, that came up with that error. So, Bradford again, a little bit lucky with uh, with Dewsbury uh, knocking on. Yeah, definitely. Bradford looking a little bit more settled, you know, when we got high, further up the pitch towards uh, Dewsbury's uh, uh, try line, you know, Bradford looking more settled and looking like they know what they're doing, more composed and more organised. So hopefully this will carry on now and utilise the scrum. Well, 15 minutes left. 15 minutes left in this one, and we see what has been prevalent in all the games that uh, 
that Bradford have had this year is that uh, Bradford went in a key position and I know that fans will say, oh, you've been negative and, you you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, the thing is, you can only say what you see, and that is that Bradford come up with another error, um, you know, from the scrum that hands now the advantage back to Dewsbury. Yeah, there's a really fine line, isn't there, about playing playing at the line and just having that little edge over there. And unfortunately, it doesn't come off in Bradford's favour, but this goes back to just settling the game and uh, playing simple rugby at the minute. 15 minutes left in this one then. You're listening to the Big Match Live on BCB 106.6 FM. Brought to you in association with Provident. Supporting Bull supporters on the way. Dewsbury will uh, look to come up the field and managing to uh, eventually find their way deep into the Bradford half. Now sit around right about 25 metres shy of the Bradford line. We'll put the ball through hands before eventually being wrapped up on the Bradford 20 metre line as James Glover, the Dewsbury fullback, is tackled by Amari Carroll and Lee Smith. Ball sacks being as industrious as ever. We'll find Jordi Sharif. Jordi Sharif will get the... Uh, will manage to haul his frame to the Bradford Bulls 10 metre line and uh, Bradford having to uh, stand strong in defence as a little gap opens on the, uh, on the far terrace side. But again, that's quickly closed by Bradford. The little chip kicked through, and it's a good job that Damien Sunderland was there, Alo Aloesque uh, goalkeeping style. But then Bradford get the penalty. Now, I thought, in all fairness, that Damien Sunderland, for all his uh, his uh, Joe Hart skills and looking like a goalkeeper, he did, he did actually. You know, when he did gather that, he eventually knocked it on. Yeah, so. I thought exactly the same, and I'm not sure why the refs called that. But can't really complain; it's in our favour. But you know, well, get ready, Danica. That one could be your handbag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the ball that's uh, kicked from Joe Keys into the stand. So, Bradford then will restart on the 30 metre line with two balls on the pitch. So we'll wait for the uh, the ball boy to uh, remove that one, as he does with a smile on his face, and Bradford get us back underway through Liam Kirk and Liam Kirk is uh, lifted above the horizontal but the referee's not having none of, none of that and everybody in the ground saw that but again the referee Nick Berry said no we'll, uh, uh, we'll let that one go as now as now Bradford come up with a uh, what can only be described as a schoolboy error from Ethan Ryan and uh, again we can only say what we see and it's 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 certainly messy, isn't it, Danica? No, it's it not. Ju just ridiculous, to be fair. You know, take the ball in, settle it down, go straight forward. You know, we were going, we we're making our way across the pitch there, and there was no need to come back and cross it back behind three of his own players. So yet again, consistency and inconsistency is the uh, order of the day for Bradford. But they will now defend on this next set of six, and they'll give a penalty away. Scott Moore and Liam Kirk are judged to be holding on in the tackle. And holding down Dom Spickman. Dom Spickman was uh, quick to play the ball. And uh, the ball will go to Paul Sykes. Paul Sykes then finds James Crowley, the fullback, and he's eventually wrapped up. He's now being pushed back, and that's good Bradford defence. Damien Surinan, Lee Smith, and James Bentley in on that one. But. <laughs> Whoa! Just when you think it can't get any better or any worse. We <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm sat looking around the, uh, a few people in the main stand that's sat in front of us where we are commentating from Danica. And uh, there's one or two fans shaking their heads because, uh, again, another schoolboy error from, uh, I think that was uh, Jordan Crowther that came up with that one. Yeah, and, just uh, that, that knock on there, just error after error after error. I think both of them just need to sit, settle this game down. Well, I think it's I think it's still too, too close. I think there's uh, some more points in it as uh, we reach the uh, 70 mini mark. So there's 10 minutes left on this one, and uh, I think now it's a case as uh, who settles, as you've said, Danica, will uh, eventually um, walk away with the spoils on this one. Yeah, it's really difficult, you know, when you're playing a game there's error and error and it's not fluid and it's inconsistent. You know, the the team that are going to win are the team that ultimately can uh, settle themselves back down and uh, play through it. Well, Liam Kirk then. Liam Kirk manages to get Bradford uh, into the Dewsbury half. Scott Moore goes in at Acton half. We'll find Corey Aston. Corey Aston will find Mikel Alaleski. And Mikel Alaleski then, on the fifth and last tackle, is brought down. And uh, the ball eventually finds its hands to Corey Aston. Corey Aston kicks for touch. And uh, the Dewsbury winger there on the uh, far stand side manages to pick that one up, Dale Morton, with ease. And Dewsbury will come again through Geordie Sharif. Bradford Bulls then having to defend. 
as uh, Dewsbury attack on the uh, on the main turret side and give another penalty away now. Now, I'm sorry, but I think the referee's been con there. Yeah, the referee then completely blew that face on the reaction of the crowd, I think. You know, I, I, I hate to say it, you know, an, an old credit to referee and it's not an easy job, but there's an inconsistency from him as well when it comes to lying on and when he's... It's just getting a bit ridiculous, to be honest. Well, Neil Bennett, the referee, then uh, certainly uh, letting Dewsbury get away with that one. But in the scheme of things, Dewsbury now lose the ball and that will find Vila Halafifi. Vila Halafifi will find Liam Kirk and Liam Kirk will straighten up in the centre of the park and Bradford really do need now to settle down, put the ball up the jumper, take some drives and, uh, and find some ground and make some ground down this park here. So Scott Moore will scoop from Ilias McCarney. Ilias Scott Moore will feed James Bentley. James Bentley is eventually wrapped up on his own. Well, he's just wrapped up on the uh, halfway line before Scott Moore gets in quickly. The ball goes to Joe Keys. Joe Keys to Damien Sirenen. And Damien Sirenen will inch his way towards the uh, 40 metre line inside the Dewsbury half as Joe Keys. Joe Keys to James Bentley. James Bentley then goes right. Eventually uh, he's wrapped up on the fifth and last. This is still messing about the play of the ball. Joe Keyes will put a little chip kick over. Paul Sykes barges in with the shoulder, but Joe Keyes manages to run away. And eventually we see the ball go to the hands of the uh, James Glover. And James Glover is eventually wrapped up. He'll get up and play the ball quickly. And that ball will find its hands into the hands of Jack Teenby. Jack Teenby will take a drive to get Dewsbury on the uh, third tackle around about, well, just shy of their own 40 metre line. And again, Dewsbury look for uh, a little quick play of the ball, but the Bradford defence with Bentley and Kirk eventually bringing down the Dewsbury player. And the Dewsbury player is uh, now throwing one or two fists. And uh, James Bentley are having words. Obviously, uh, James Bentley's uh, St. Ellen's bound next season. And Lee Smith goes in now to... Uh, to split things up. Yeah, this is Jews. We're just getting a little bit scratchy now. You know, the, they're calling the ref and are thinking a lot more things should be coming up in their favour. It's just not the case, you know, and, and they're losing their head about it. So, like I said earlier, the team that's going to win this is a team now that gets to uh, compose themselves quicker and look Bradford on it. So hopefully that just utilise the fact that Jewsbury are getting scrappy and silly, to be honest. Well, Paul Sykes then. Paul Sykes puts a little chip kick over. That's collected by James Glover. James Glover throws that back. That's uh, finds anybody. Eventually finds its way to Paul Sykes. Paul Sykes then feeds the ball out to the uh, fast hand side through Gareth Putts. And Jewsbury still in possession before the ball goes into touch in Jewsbury's uh, enthusiasm. And uh, again, another error that will see Bradford get the possession. Just going back to what we were saying, Danica, obviously uh, we roll that back a little bit. We saw Michael Knowles and uh, James Bentley coming together. We then saw Lucas Walshaw run in. And I know we didn't have much of a preamble, but we did say about how scrappy these games have been and how niggly and uh, grubby, if you like, yeah. that they've been. And again, I think we saw a little bit of the grubbiness from Dewsbury um, sneaking or creeping into the play. I think it's just a bit of frustration, to be honest with you. The errors that they've been making are just silly errors, you know, and it comes from not not reacting, uh, you know, to the condition of the, the pitch and the weather and the ball and then just trying to put things on that are unnecessary and, you know, it does get frustrating and therefore you get annoyed with each other and get annoyed with yourself and that's showing clearly in the Dewsbury, Dewsbury players and, you know, it's just a little bit unnecessary but uh, hopefully Bradford can keep composed and um, utilise it and play off the back of it. Well, the referee is, uh, has tried to repack the scrum three times now. Eventually the ball does go in and uh, we see Lee Smith come away with the ball before he's wrapped up. And then Damien Surinan will get Bradford over their own 40 metre line. And again, Jordi Sharif is uh, more than happy to uh, tug away at Surinan's ankle. And Surinan's not happy about that. And eventually Ross Peltier. Now Ross Peltier takes a drive but he's pushed back by a two-man tackle of Dewsbury and Bradford sit still inside their own half and not managing to make any headway here but eventually Sam Alice gets Bradford to their halfway line and the ball will go to Corey Aston. Corey Aston to Evan Hodgson. Evan Hodgson will uh, try and burst the tackle before he's wrapped up on the fifth and last. What will Bradford do here? They will kick for touch. That will bounce off a Dewsbury player. Now he's saying he didn't play at it and uh, Bradford have 
a man taken out in back play. Which Corey Aston took the kick and was an absolutely prolapsed in the back play. The Dewsbury player, uh, Dewsbury winger on that far stand side, Gareth Potts, said, uh, well, I never went for it. And uh, the referee's in consultation now with a touch judge. So, again, like we said, Danica, a little bit grubby. Yeah, he just went for the uh, went for the to, to charge down the kick there and uh, just continued through and hit him off the ball. Wasn't a great hit. And then you know, from where we're sat, we haven't got the best view, I guess. But to me, it looked like it came off a Dewsbury player. But um, we shall see what the referee decides. Well, we see Michael Knowles in deep uh, consultation with the uh, with the t with the referee. The referee eventually awards the penalty to Bradford. So Bradford will get the uh, possession back just on the 40 metre line that will see Bradford kick down the field and play will resume 35 metres away from the Dewsbury try line Evan Hodgson then Evan Hodgson will take this one straight and uh, hard at the Dewsbury defence he's eventually wrapped up a quick play of the ball then sees Sam Allis make his way forward and Sam Allis loses the ball and uh, again the Dewsbury players rush to form the scrum and stop the clock as we've uh, four minutes left on the clock of this one. Do yeah, we just need to get into this consistent defence again, and Bradford have done really well up in the half of the of the pitch, you know, and when it comes to this scrum now, Bradford can hopefully get the bodies in the tackles, throw the play the ball down, you know, whether the ref lets that or not is a different matter, but, um, and, like, let's get this clock ticking down and uh, hopefully don't allow any points through. Well, time back on then. There's, uh, like I said, just a little under four minutes left of this one. Dewsbury Rams 12, Bradford Bulls 16. It's not been a classic, it's been a good um, a good defensive play in patches from Bradford, but it's been also an error con an error strewn performance as Dewsbury come back up the park then and they will uh, well if that's not obstruction, I don't know what is, <laughs> because uh, just let me explain there, you know, we've seen two Dewsbury players and one of them runs straight at the Bradford line as Paul Sykes then does a little bit of an offload to Lucas Walshaw. Lucas Walshaw is eventually wrapped up by Sam Allison and James Bentley before Dewsbury get up and play the ball and that's a bone crunching tackle from Damien Surinan and Sam Allis and the ball comes loose and the referee the referee is now talking to Damien Surinan and telling Damien Surinan to calm down stop the back chat by the look yeah, of things stop the back chat um, and Sam Allis then turns the ball over back to uh, Dewsbury and that will see Dom Spatman tap the ball as Dewsbury will look to come now and try and get something to close this game down and again the ball finds its hands to Michael Knowles who has moved across from the uh, from that side of the pitch today so he's eventually wrapped up by James Bentley and them two are certainly having a, a fun old time today Dom Spatman then is uh, wrapped up by Scotty Moore in the next tackle and again now, Dewsbury old man in the referee, and James Bentley is penalised, and uh, the referee speaking to Scotty Moore as uh, Dewsbury quick to take that one from Toby Everett. Toby Everett now sits round about three metres shy of the Bradford Bulls try line. A quick play then, that will find its way to Paul Sykes. Paul Sykes throws that to Lucas Walshaw, the long raking hands of Lucas Walshaw pull that one in before he's eventually wrapped up by Amari Caro, James Bentley and Lee Smith and Dewsbury play the ball quickly, Paul Sykes then will get that one to Everett, Everett then pushes his way towards the uh, Bradford try line and again the tackle bring him down but again Dewsbury looking through Paul Sykes with a little kick, ricochets that off the legs of Evan Austin and then you see Ethan Ryan quick to pick that one in so again, Paul Sykes trying to uh, trick the Bradford defence, but I think Bradford was switched onto it, and I think that's been his little game plan all afternoon. You know, these little kick yeah. to ricochet back and get Bradford to force the error. Yeah, absolutely. And it, you know, a couple of times it's paid off for him. But I'll tell you something. Have, have Dewsbury been to an acting school recently? Because the amount they're kicking off around the ruck area at the referee is incredible. You know, their toys have well and truly been thrown out the pram today, especially as it's getting a little bit scratched towards the end. And then. It's just slightly unnecessary, really, you know. And Bradford, luckily, have kept their heads and have managed to uh, to play and get the advantage of their uh, errors. Fifth and last, then, on this set of six for Bradford, and the ball goes to Scotty Moore. Scotty Moore kicks 
out of his own hands and that will bounce and go dead so that will see Dewsbury restart on their own 20 metre line there is around about 20 seconds left of this one the Dewsbury Rams 12, Bradford Bulls 16 referee uh, blows the whistle and says come on let's speed it up Bradford clinging on for dear life then in this one as we're inside now the uh, the final seconds of this one although the clock's just reset itself and uh, well it looks like we've got another uh, couple of minutes left on the clock <laughs> I don't know where that couple of minutes have come from because uh, it was uh, it was showing as if they were inside the last 10 seconds and uh, it suddenly reset to 38 we're now on 39 and Bradford have the ball in hand so Ilias McCartney then Ilias McCartney goes one way and he's managing now to run to the right hand side before Lucas Walshaw and Sykes come in and absolutely clatter uh, Ilias um, for his troubles he certainly felt that one and now Vila Halafihi is uh, eventually wrapped up as well before Scott Moore takes a little run from the uh, from the rook and a swinging arm from Lucas Walshaw if that had connected it was good night Vienna for Ilias McCartney but then on the fifth and last tackle Joe Keyes puts the ball down the centre of the park a clever kick from Joe Keyes will see the ball run dead and uh, that will see the Dewsbury Rams now have to restart on their own 20 metre line and uh, the clock now says we're inside the last 10 seconds of this one as Dewsbury Rams 12, Bradford 16 you can probably hear the fans counting down as we wait for the hooter to go time's upon the clock the hooter's, uh, hooter man's gone to sleep as Dewsbury have the ball in hand and uh, now the hooter does go and that sees the ball go to Lee Smith Lee Smith will take the tackle Bradford won this one Dewsbury Rams 12 Bradford Bulls 16 and uh, Bradford hung on in the end in what's been a little bit of an error performance but I'm sure that the players out there and Jeff Toovey will be uh, happy to just get the two points from this local derby